actually part two of our crypto trading bot video where we're coding a trading bot in Python, right? And obviously, like you said, it's going to be trading crypto, it's going to be trading Ethereum. So this is going to be the uh, uh, part of the video or the part, you know, of that part two uh, where we could do the actual coding of the trading bot, right? So if you haven't seen part one, definitely go check that video out as we you know, go through what the strategy is that we're actually going to be implementing as we go through and code, right? And, you know, it might be kind of hard to kind of just pick up what I'm talking about as I'm going through, and you know, coding and all this kind of stuff. So if you haven't seen part one, definitely go check that out as well. But this is going to be where I actually get into the coding. So definitely follow along if that's something you're interested in. Again, if you're not interested in coding along, definitely go check out the link in the description below. Um, you'll find the source code down there. Uh, so hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hope it brought some value to you guys and join us again next time, man. Thank you. All right, you guys. So in this part of the video, we're actually going to get into the coding of the bot. So to code the bot, what we're going to be using is what's called Quant Connect. So as you can see here, I already have a Quant Connect account and I'm getting into what's called the algorithm lab. Um, when you go to the algorithm lab, you want to click create a new algorithm. Um, it might take a little bit for it to come up for you. Depends on, you know, kind of what you pay for for Quant Connect. Um, when you go through all that so just definitely take some time to look through that um, and kind of think strategically about that in terms of what you're going to need and what you think you might need now versus later but once we get into quant connect we're going to want to start getting into coding our bot so what we're doing here is we're essentially first and foremost setting up all the indicators that we're going to need so we're establishing all the indicators but we're also establishing what it is that we're going to be trading in the first place so what does that mean so first and foremost this is a bot like i said in the beginning of the video that's only going to trade ethereum so we're essentially passing through that we're trading through it that we're trading ethereum and then we're giving that ethereum the name of self.security in the bot right um, so we can pass it through when we want to reference it for indicators uh, or later on when we want to talk about what it is that we're buying or selling in the bot. So the first indicator that we're going to put on here is the minute stochastic indicator, right? Um, and kind of as we go through this, I'm not only going to talk about what we're doing, but I'm also going to talk about kind of what is uh, algorithmic trading at a, at a high level. On top of that, why I decided to even get into algorithmic trading and just coding in general. Right. And I think kind of an important part of that is this idea of what does coding offer me besides just this idea of what can I do with algorithmic trading. Right. Um, so right now what we're doing is we're passing through the uh, stochastic and we're telling it we want it to be passed through for the, um, like we said, self that security or Ethereum. Um, and the 20 you saw there was essentially the period. And then we said the resolution dot minute. And that's essentially where we tell it the time frame. Now you get some time frames out of the box, quote unquote, with Quant Connect, and those being the minute daily um, and then the weekly, I believe as well. Uh, so I'm just using the minute here for the stochastic and then the MFI as well, which is the money flow index. Now we're passing through also the uh, first EMA, which is going to be again, like we talked about in the strategy video or the strategy portion of the video that we're going to be using the hour EMA, right? So again, we're passing it through for that Ethereum security. Uh, we want it for a nine period EMA um, and we want it again for a resolution of one hour or a time frame of one hour. Um, and so that's the fast EMA as we're calling it. Um, and then we also have the slow EMA um, as we might call it. Uh, and that's just kind of how I think about it, right? Fast, slow. Um, and this is going to be a longer period. This is going to be that longer period EMA being the 50. And again, we're just going to pass it through that time frame of one hour, right? Now, we're going to do the same thing, just copy it down um, for daily and just kind of make it a little bit quicker in that sense. Um, and we really just then just need to update some syntax um, here. And then also when we look at the resolution and also we want to update the period itself as well after we update the resolution syntax. Um, so first we're going to pass through daily for that and then daily here as well. And then now we're going to make this 20 instead of 50 like we talked about in the strategy video. Now, the last thing that we want to do with our indicators, we're just using three indicators again, is we just want to warm these indicators up. Now, this is essentially giving it 10 days to warm itself up. Um, and just, you know, with data, uh, and this is just something that you might do with back testing. Now, the next thing that we're doing on in the on data uh, function is essentially, um, Essentially what the on data function is, is every single time that there's kind of, you know, a new price feed um, through 
it's uh, it updates right or it's called or right so in that sense what we're doing is we're going to tell it right now if all of these indicators that we just passed through aren't ready right and that's what we're typing in right now so if the if not self dot minute dot minute stochastic dot is ready right and what does that mean so if it's not ready and if the self dot mfi is not ready minute mfi is not ready um and you know all of the rest of the indicators that we just created up there we just want to return because we don't want to be trading when our indicators aren't ready and that was the point of the whole warm-up thing right um so you'll see that there's kind of going to be kind of a um, a little bit of a break period when we actually go through in terms of testing it at the beginning right um and you're seeing some red lines right now that's just because um like i said quant connect can be a little bit slow or fast depending on you for real um it's really dependent on your your internet how much other stuff you have going on in your computer um and so kind of in this sense it's a little bit behind so even though i'm typing in all these things so right now what i'm doing is you know i said if it's not ready we want to return so now i'm saying when the stochastic is ready we want to create these variables right um but as i'm typing these things in uh, quant connect is a bit behind so i think it thinks i'm typing an error it thinks i'm you know have an error going on until the you know the if statement or whatever it is that i'm creating is complete so now that we have the you know the current stochastic value passed through as a variable we also want to pass through the current stochastic k value and then we're going to do the same for the stochastic D uh, value as well. And that's the stochastic K and D line, sorry. Um, so we're going to create current values for those. Um, and then we're also going to do the same essentially for the MFI. And then we're going to see here why it's a bit different in terms of we didn't need to look at the chart so much when we were looking at the overall strategy that we were creating. Now create this stochastic D value again, we're just using that copy and paste. Um, that we used again like with the daily uh with the daily emas and the hourly hourly emas right so now we're going to be creating that um minutely mfi um and i'm very bad at typing as you'll see later on i have a couple typos which is you know it's pretty pretty common to have um but essentially now we're creating this positive money flow uh variable right and in creating this variable again we're just going to be using the current value um but for this one much like we used with stochastics and getting the stochastic k line for example we want to get the current value of the minutely mfi's positive money flow right if there isn't right and so we pass that through and just to make sure that we don't have any issues with it saying that the uh what we defined isn't available I always just kind of do this. This isn't something that you always have to do, um, depending on where you place it, but it's just something I do just for my own sanity, um, just so it's not something that slows me down later on. Um, and so once I create the variables, I kind of pass them through outside of, the, of their creation, um, just so they're there as well. Now what we're doing is we're actually going to be creating the variable where we will be getting the current price of Ethereum. Um, each time that we want to say, for example, check it against the EMA. And also we're gonna be creating the variable where we're gonna create the actual order quantity when we want to buy or sell some Ethereum, right? Um, and for both of these, we're gonna be using some predefined functions in Quant Connect, our predefined methods in Quant Connect um, to create these uh, variables that we need. So that being the, again, the price variable and that quantity variable. Now what we're doing is we're creating essentially the um, essentially the setup to check the rest of our indicators, right? So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to pass a false value um, to all the things that we're going to want to check for before we enter a trade. Now what do I mean by that? So what is something that we're going to want to check for before we enter a trade? Well, the first thing that we're going to want to check is are we are we we're going to want to check is are we already in a trade, right? So that's why we pass through the is long and is short, um, or as you see, is false, as it, it should be, is short, right? Um, but that's why we pass through the is long, and so we can go through and tell Quant Connect, well, check if we are long, and if we are long, return, right? Um, essentially, and we can do the same thing with is short. 
And we're gonna wanna do the same thing with overbought, oversold. We're gonna wanna look at, again, thinking about the strategy that we talked about in the previous iteration of the video, is the stochastic K line above or below the stochastic D line um, while we are overbought or oversold. Um, also, we wanna think about is the price on the hourly chart and on the daily chart, are we above or below those nine periods, so that fast EMA, or that 20 period um, on the one hour in terms of the slow period, um, or then the slow period on the, uh, sorry, the 20 period being the slow period on the daily, and then the 50 EMA being the slow period on the uh, one hour. And then also we want to think about as well, are those you know, EMAs stack. So is the nine and the 50 on the one hour stacked up if we want to buy? And then is the nine and the 20 on the daily stacked up if we want to buy as well? Now, again, not only do we want to check those EMAs, you know, being price being in the right direction, but we want to check if they're stacked up. And so once we pass them through as false, all we have to do then, and this is just something that Daniel actually kind of taught me to do when I was coding um, just for really just ease of sharing my code sake, um, just for something like this, for example, um, because it makes it a bit easier if we type it out like this um, down the line to read actually what is happening, what, are, what is the if statement that is being called or what is the if statement that's you know being checked, I should say, before we buy or sell, right? And I'll show you what I mean by that, right? Because essentially now that all we have to do, now all we have to do since we pass it through as is long, right, equals false, is we have to say, well, when is is long true? Well, we, is long is true when we, our portfolio has some Ethereum in it and it is a long position. So all we have to say is if self.portfolio, then we tell it um, what security we wanna check for this. Um, we tell it again, Ethereum using that self.security. Um, and then we check again, like I said, is it long? And then we ask ourselves, and then we say, okay, well, if it is long, which is exactly what we just said there, if self.portfolio is long Ethereum, pass through that is long is now true, right? And we'll do this rest, we'll do the same thing with the rest of our indicators and essentially the setup of our strategy. So again, what are we gonna be doing? Well, we wanna check if the minute stochastic variable or the current minute stochastic um, value is above or below the, uh, the overbought and oversold threshold. Now, what are those thresholds? That being 80 and 20, and that's what we're passing through up here now, the stochastic upper threshold and stochastic lower threshold. So again, we're gonna use that variable that we created of the current minute stochastic value, and then we're gonna check, is that above or below the upper threshold? If it's above the upper threshold, then what? We're overbought. So we're gonna say overbought is true, right? And then we're gonna do the same with oversold um, as well. And then once we do that with overbought and oversold, again, we're gonna do it down the line with each of our variables and what we're trying to look at or see with our variables. So the stochastic K and D line, we wanna see that the K line is above the D line. And we also wanna check if the K line is above, the, I mean, is below the D line, All right? So we're gonna check for both of those things. We're also gonna check for is the price above or below the nine period exponential moving average on both the one hour and the daily. Right? And we're also gonna check if the nine and the 50 period moving averages on the uh, one hour are stacked up or stacked down. Um, and we're also gonna check if the nine and the 20 period exponential moving averages on the daily are stacked up or stacked down, right? So that are, that's, what, that's everything that we're gonna check and that's essentially what we're passing through now. And then after that, it's as simple as passing through the idea of when do we want to buy and when do we want to sell? And then we want to tell Quant Connect how do we want to set up our risk management, which is set up by a very, very, very easy to use, um, you know, kind of function that Quant Connect gives you that is, you know, really, really helpful. And that's why I'm a big, big fan of Quant Connect. So if you don't have an account, definitely go check them out. Um, you know, definitely I would recommend paying for the node. Uh, you don't have to pay for a back testing node but it does make pain, you know, back testing just a bit easier uh, because it'll make it go a bit quicker. And especially when you start testing things like options, this is, you know, from my personal experience, it makes testing options so much quicker. But now that we talked about kind of what we're passing through here and creating with these variables, I also wanna talk a little bit about why I even decided to get into quantitative trading, you know, not, you know, kind of building 
algorithms trying to get later into the you know the deeper realm of real quantitative trading right and kind of what was the the draw there and really what it is and why you know maybe you might be in, interested in doing it maybe it might be something that you might be interested in having somebody else do for you in your own trading or you know investing strategies so first and foremost again Quantitative trading is really just trading that uses a computer program or an algorithm that follows a set of instructions to place a trade. It acts as a way to rule out human emotions, right? That's the way that I see it in terms of it acts as a way to kind of rule out human emotions involved in the execution side of trading. You can kind of build a bot and maybe built around a human emotion in terms of using it to build a bot around sentiment. So, but in terms of execution, you don't have that human emotion element to it. The bot's gonna do what the bot's supposed to do. Right. You can also serve as a way to spend a little bit less time analyzing the market all the time. Right? You can also have bots that do things maybe that don't execute for you, but they provide you important data points. Right? So maybe a bot that provides you a market breadth data point every single day right to your inbox that might be nice for you to have before you start trying to trade. Right? Um, and this is kind of what it might be for, um, I mean not Quant Connect, this might, might be for quantitative trading, right? Now there are a number of platforms that you might use that act as development environments um, specifically that, have, that have specifically defined functions to make coding trading algorithms more seamless, right? And you know, some, a good example of that besides what we're using now today in Quant Connect is MT4 and MT5, right? Now, MT4 and MT5 based uh, coding is really what's what's called uh, C sharp based coding, and then we see here, I mean C plus plus. Sorry, um, it's it's really C plus plus, but it's kind of like its own version of C plus um, plus. And then we have um, C sharp here with Quant Connect, and then also Python with Quant Connect. Right uh, now, both platforms are back testing capabilities that test your strategy um, before forward testing, which is especially important with algorithmic trading as you know, you're really going to be, as we'll see here with this strategy, you're also going to see likely the problem of overfitting, which is something that a lot of people fall into when it comes to creating their first trading strategy, right? Um, but it's a very important process to forward test it, but also you're going to want to back test it before as well, right? Um, but that being said, why did I decide to get into algorithmic trading myself or try to learn the code? Um, and not just kind of have the heart do it for me, you know, because that is something that I could always do, right? Um, and that's something that you could do yourself, right? Um, if you think about it logistically, um, Daniel understands trading. Uh, me and Daniel are friends. I know Daniel is a very good coder, right? I could just have him do it, right? Now, before we get into that, let's talk about what we're going to do right now in terms of checking the if statements of actually passing through an order, right? Having the bot create or execute an order. So the first thing we're going to check is again, are we long already? So this is obviously going to be for if we're buying. So if we're long, if we're not long and we're oversold, so that's oversold on the one minute and on the one minute we're over. So if we're oversold and the stochastic K is above the stochastic D, and I'm just kind of checking my, my spelling here. And then the price above and then price is above the one hour fast EMA and then the one hour fat and then the one hour EMAs are stacked upwards, right? And we're just gonna have to repeat the last the same thing again for the daily. So price above the daily EMA, the daily fast EMA. Again, just checking my spelling here. And the daily EMAs are stacked upwards, right? So just checking that logic, making sure we got everything. We want it to pass through, which even though we do that, we're gonna forget something. All right, what is it? See later. But now that we have that, we'll go through and pass through the idea we want to create a buy order. So we'll do again, just a helpful little 
um, little function that Quant Connect has for us, which is self.buy, and then we'll you know tell it that we want to buy Ethereum using self.security, and then how much Ethereum do we want to buy? Well, we tell it how much Ethereum we want to buy by passing through that quantity variable that we created, and we're buying essentially using that quantity variable, we're buying five percent worth of our account so we have a hundred thousand dollar account we're buying five thousand dollars worth of ethereum in that first order and then let's say that it's a hundred and five thousand dollars now in the account afterwards um you know just for ease of you know ease of example then afterwards we're now buying you know a hundred we're now buying five percent of a hundred and five thousand instead of just a hundred thousand that's why I wanted to pass through that variable as a dynamic thing instead of just static where you're buying the same lot size the whole time. Now, on top of that, what we're also passing through is the risk management parameters as well. So the first thing that we pass through is the take profit, which is essentially just saying once we hit an unrealized profit uh, percent per security of 2%, liquidate the position, liquidate any positions we have in the portfolio. And then similarly, once we hit a um, maximum drawdown percent per security of 1%, liquidate any positions in the portfolio. Now we're just going to pass through the exact same thing that we just passed through up top for the if statement to buy, um, but we're going to pass through the flip side to go short, right? So first we're going to check if we're short, then we're going to check if we're overbought, then we're going to check if the K line is below the D line, we're going to check if price is below the fast EMA uh, on the one hour and that uh, the one hour EMAs are stacked down, then we're gonna check that price is below the fast EMA on the daily, and then we're gonna check that the daily EMAs are stacked down, right? And then again, we're just gonna pass through that self.sell function instead of self.buy, and then we're gonna use quantity again, um, and then we're gonna tell it again we want to buy Ethereum using self.security. Now, all that being said, all that being done, we now know that we're essentially ready to pass through what we need to pass. We're essentially ready to back test the strategy. But right before we go to pass it through and back test, we realize we forgot to put in positive money flow. So that's what we're adding in now. Um, and we actually want to check positive money flow on both sides. So even if we're going to the downside, I want to check that, that we have positive money flow, not that we have negative money flow, right? Um, and so that being said, we're going to go ahead and back test that. Um, and we'll see that we'll get an error. And this, that's okay. You know, like I said, you're going to make simple errors like this when you first get started. You should. Um, it's how you learn to error handle, which I think is kind of an important part of coding. Um, because you're never going to be perfect in coding. You know, Daniel still makes errors as he goes along and codes himself. Um, but, you know, he's quicker than me at finding his errors, which, as you would expect, he's been coding for going on, I don't know, like six or seven or some eight years now. I think he was even coding before he got to college. So, yeah, he's been coding for a while. Um, so that's an important thing to learn. And you see here that we also just have a basically a syntax error error where I said again we pass through is false instead of passing through is short um, and we had is short for the rest of the code right um, so that is essentially should fix everything and that the back test should run properly now um, so first and foremost we're gonna run our back test um, just from what the date that they passed through and they gave us just to make sure that everything works and then we're gonna set up the back test to run from um, the beginning of 2021 to the beginning of 2022 um, and I'll show you how to do that very quickly it's a very simple thing I'll also show you how to shut down a back test just make sure you do this when you're shutting down the back test um, you do both of these steps so you can you know use the same node if you want um, so when we want to shut down a back test essentially what we're going to do is we're going to X we're going to one go to our little um, it essentially looks like a little turtle icon over to the right but first, we're going to um, set up the uh, start and end date here. So first, we'll set up our start and end date. So we want to go again, like I said, from 2021 to 2022. So we'll set that up here. And again, self.set end date. And then 2021. And then we want to go to this little icon over to the right where we have resources. And we want to stop that back test. And we'll let it run from 2021 to 2022. And then after that, I'll show you a very simple way to let it run from um, whatever date that you set as the start date to today's date or essentially up as far as it can possibly go up into, you know, the current time. 
um, and it's a very simple process. But we'll let this back test run first, just to make sure everything works as it should. While that back test is running, you know, I kind of just break it down and finish up talking about why I even enjoyed making the switch um, from, you know, kind of being solely a discretionary trader because that was where I was before. That was kind of how I operated in the markets before was being solely discretionary um, to having an element of quantitative trading um, as well. Now, I don't think that it is something where I'm just going to stop discretionary trading altogether. I do believe that I will likely, you know, honestly in the near future get back into it in a more serious way um but i think it's something where i want to have other things set up and kind of rolling first so i can give discretionary trading the time and attention that it really needs without feeling like you know i'm you know giving up this or missing out on this opportunity um and not so much giving up like fun but more so giving up uh, kind of like leaving money on the table um leaving skills on the table all that kind of stuff right so that being said, um, you know, kind of making the switch and learning to code myself instead of just having Daniel do it, like we were talking about before. Um, one thing that I've enjoyed is, you know, I'm learning just very basically. I'm now forced to learn a more universal skill than technical analysis is. You know, as much as I love trading, uh, if I ever were to decide to step away from being actively involved in the markets and spending time learning to code, um, actively involved in the markets, then spending time learning to code. Um, through coding trading bots, which is something that I enjoy, you know, I enjoy the markets, I enjoy trading as of now, it's going to make it a little bit easier for me to pick up that skill of coding like we talked about before. You know, I still do other exercises besides just coding trading bots. I do regular just coding based exercises. I try to, you know, code just regular programs, you know, quote unquote regular programs, you know, just basic everyday programs that like a business might need, right? Um, so I can learn those things. Uh, but at the same time, I'm learning all of this stuff through the skill of uh, coding essentially a strategy that you know coding trading strategies and I enjoy trading now we'll look at kind of setting up running from you know a time that we set in the beginning to now and essentially all you have to do is not set an end date if you don't set an end date the market is just gonna run through um, for as long as it possibly can until it gets to essentially its present day um, so we'll let the the you know 2021 to 2022 back test finish up here. We'll see that it'll finish negative, um, and then we'll start the back test from 2021 uh, to current day, right? And finally, to kind of round out what we were talking about in terms of why I've enjoyed making the switch to algorithmic trading and learning to code in that sense, um, you know, I can still put to use the skill that I learned of technical analysis. Like, let's say even I decide I step to step away. I could still, for example, work with a, a trading firm. Um, you know, I could sharpen up my coding skills and work with the trading firm because I understand trading, I understand technical analysis, like I understand these types of things that they would be talking to me about. It's not going to be a huge learning curve or a huge hurdle for me to get over. Um, the, the biggest hurdle for me would then be the coding, right? And that's just a fact of me doing it, which is, you know, what I'm doing now, right? And on top of that, you know, kind of not only does it kind of open up doors down the line, because let's say even I decide to step away from trading altogether and I never even want to code anything for trading, you know, I just spend time picking up the skill of trade uh, of coding, I can kind of take that later on, right, and use that later on as that's just kind of more a more universal skill than technical analysis or just trading in general. That's just the reality of the situation. There's nothing wrong with trading, but there's really only a certain type of person um, even if they're wealthy, that's going to be willing to give a trader money, right? And I don't mean like a hedge fund. I mean like a trader, like you, like an independent trader, all this kind of stuff. There's only a certain type of person that's going to be willing to do that. And it's not everybody. But if somebody's a billionaire, I, I'm not going to say for sure, but I would wager that they likely have some sort of business assets or some sort of business investments or something that might need your services or might need your skills um, besides just trading. So if you develop more universal skills, you become more valuable to that person, right? And when you're more valuable to that person, you know, it's easier to kind of be around that person, you know, learn from all that good shit, right? Um, and so this is kind of the last way that you can set the current date. 
uh, and this is a very simple way as well. And it's basically just, again, using a very simple function that Mark and that gives you. And you say date time um, dot now. And that will take it to the current time. Um, but no need to pass that through. No need to run that as we're already running for the current date. All right. But other than that, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, man. I hope it provided some value to you. Um, and I hope that the coding made sense to you guys. Um, if this is something that you enjoy and want to see more of definitely let us know um, and like i said if you want access to the code if you want to check your code um, to make sure that you coded it correctly or anything like that um, definitely go check out the link in the description it's going to be down there um, but again like i said hope you enjoyed it hope it brought some value um, now we're just going to let the, you know, the, the back test finish itself out this one's going to take a bit longer and we've got to go through the rest of it you know 2022 as well. So, hope you guys enjoyed it. Man. Hope you guys enjoyed it.